you'll start seeing images of ghostly figures. You'll start hallucinating about ghosts and you'll have hallucinations about uh, the, the, you know, really it's, it, you're going to become fearful of the future. Because secret sin is allowed into the heart. And so now because of that, you can very easily and I can very easily, now listen carefully, in our soul realm, in the imagery of our minds, in our temple, move to a place of reprobation. And when you get there, you will begin to say things like, God does not see. And what that means is, it doesn't mean that this is all being done in the dark. What that means is you get to a place where you say, God doesn't care about me. He's not helping me. He doesn't see where I am. He doesn't care. So then, I'm going to replace him with something or someone that will help me. You move progressively from that point. Well, God doesn't see. He doesn't hear me no more. He doesn't care about me. God doesn't help me. Pretty soon you move in. I'm going to go into this. I'm going to show what I'm talking about. From the imagery in the temple that's on the walls of the soul. These ghostly figures of terror and fear. Amen. The offering up of incense to make the gods high. The smoke that makes them high. So they'll smile upon the land. And as we make them high and they smile upon the land, they will help us because God doesn't help us. So we've got 70 elders that are standing in the temple of God with their incense, waving their incense before these 70 niches in the temple. And they're trying to make the idols high with their drugs. To make them happy so they'll smile upon their life. Because God doesn't care. God doesn't see. And then you have the woman, the women of Israel. Right there in the temple precincts. Singing the song, not for Tammuz, but the song in Tammuz. And that song deals with a false god that was believed at the beginning of spring. He would rise from the dead and he would live throughout the harvest time. All the way to the end of harvest. And at the end of harvest that he would die again. Tammuz would die again and everything would turn brown and die and you know there would be no, no, no crops but again at the beginning of the spring of the next year he rises from the dead again and we go through the process again. But when he dies the women of, of Jerusalem not the pagans of Babylon they are sitting there singing the song of Tammuz in the temple. Not for Tammuz, as the King James Version says, but in Tammuz. Which means their song then, that they are singing in relationship to the death of a false god. They are singing it in the house of God. And that means they are applying it to God. And as they sing, they're singing the song, you're dead God. You're gone God. So this is the problem. It's not just in the physical temple of God. It's in the imagery. It's in the imaginations of the soul. And so God is saying, this is what's going on. Amen? Are you all with me tonight? You and I, brothers and sisters, I know you got God. I know you have the Holy Ghost, but so do I. But we can allow an image and idols in our lives, rivals to come in our lives that are rivals to God's love. And he gets fired up, man. He gets impassioned. He's got a watchman on the wall, warning, warning, warning. His love, hallelujah, hallelujah. is stirred up. Pray 
Praise the Lord. In the imaginations of our own soul in our temple. You can get to a place where you start moving into reprobation. Secret sin, sin begins to come into our lives. We begin to harbor secret sin in our life. And then pretty soon what happens is we become blind to the love of God. We no longer have proper sense. And we start thinking God doesn't care. He doesn't see me. He doesn't love me. He doesn't, won't help me. And he's dead. He's dead to me and he's gone. And now you're dealing with ghost imagery in your imaginations. You're dealing with serpents in the walls of your soul. And you're offering incense to them. So that's why it's so dangerous to give yourself to drugs. Because drugs alter your conscience. They alter your mind. They uh, affect your imagery, your imagination. And pretty soon you start seeing things. Hallucinations, ghosts, spirits, serpents on the walls of your soul. And all that does is, is like these men there with their incense. Offering highs. To their gods. To smile upon them. To help them in their life. And God will say this in this vision. This is why. Judgment must come on this house. Because right there in the temple. In the imagery. In the gates. Is the image that's causing me to be jealous. The love of God, brothers and sisters. The love that God has for you. And the love that God has for me. When things come around. They begin to flirt. They begin to seek to take you away from that love. The word jealousy means God. Again, he's not looking and saying, oh, that was better looking than I am. He's got more than I have. No, he's saying. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, you're letting some el- something else in your life. You got fire. He's got fire. Amen. Say praise the Lord. Oh, how he loves you. But in your mind, he doesn't care. In your mind, he's gone. He's dead. In your mind, he doesn't see. But he's jealous because he does love. He doesn't like rivals. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, church. The book of Revelation talks about the church of Ephesus. They left their first love. Their first love is Jesus. They left it. And so what God is saying to Through the prophet Ezekiel. As God shows him the condition. He said. These people. Have left their first love. They've left their husband. They're like my wife. Who has left their husband. For another. Suker. Another lover. Amen. Amen. And so it is God, His amazing, intense love for you and for me. That He will come and He will speak to us over and over. He will place a watchman on the wall and declare, watch out. There's danger. There's enemies coming. There are rivals. How's your walk tonight? He will come to you in the garden of your soul, the paradise of your soul. Where art thou? Where are you? It's not that he doesn't know where you are physically, but he wants you to know, where are you in your walk with me? Where's your spirit? Where's your attitude? How's your heart? 
The sump had come and replaced it. The revival has come. And so the awesome love of God. Again, he's showing them their condition. So they'll repent. Brother, sister, listen to, to me. Don't ever think as a believer that in the, the realm of your soul, the temple, the walls of your being, that you cannot allow a rival to come into your life, an idol to come into your life, sacred sin to come into your life or my life. And then all of a sudden you begin to see ghosts and serpents on the walls. And you start misunderstanding his love. And your imagination begins to move. Your soul begins to move away from God. These people at this point, brothers and sisters, many of them have become reprobate. Which means in their soul... They have said no to God so many times, turned their back on God so many times, and His love kept coming to them, but they said, we don't want your love, God. They had done it so many times, rejected His Word so many times, that now, when the Word comes, they are not able to receive it. That's what reprobation is. Remember we talked about how hard they were? There's what is called gospel-hardened. You can come to the house of God over and over and over and over. Feel the presence of God over and over and over. Hear the word of God over and over and over. And as you reject it, reject it, reject it pretty soon, you can become hardened to the gospel. Your heart becomes hard. Your mind becomes delusional. You start walking in fantasies and, and, and uh, mm, hallucinations in the deep recesses of your mind. You start thinking the way uh, crazy thoughts. And pretty soon, if you cross that line of reprobation, that means, it doesn't mean that God stop, doesn't stop, you know, that he, he doesn't stop loving you. He still loves you. The problem is, you've crossed the line in yourself. Well, you won't come back. Because you have hardened yourself so many times. And brothers and sisters, I as your pastor, I don't know how many times you've hardened your heart. I don't know how many times when you've come to the house of God, you shut that heart down and said, I will not respond. The first time you said no to God, it was really hard. The second time you said no to God, it got a little easier. And the more you say no to God, the easier it becomes. And pretty soon you can't say yes. His word has gone forth. And it's very clear. He gave us a clear sounding trumpet. And he does that constantly. For us. A clear sounding trumpet. About how to handle things in your life. How to approach things in your life. He said no. Here come the ghost. Here come the fears. Here comes the torment. Here comes the terror. And if we had taken the word of God that was preached, that was sounded to us, and lived by it, we would not have the ghost and the torment and the terror in our lives. And so now, this is the state of the people. Oh, God loves you, brothers and sisters. He loves you. He loves me. The passion he has, the impassion, the fire. Help me pray. Look at him and say, God gets fired up. When it, when, it, when it comes to the people of God, you're the apple of his eye. His, his bride. Woo. How he loves you. Can you imagine, brothers and sisters, almost 2,000 year church age, and he still hadn't come and taken his bride yet? The longing that is in Jesus' heart 
to come and rapture you home to glory as his beautiful bride. The longing that he has. Not to, yeah, he's with you in the spirit, but to be with you physically in the new Jerusalem. The time of the rapture. Have you ever thought about it? What's well, going to be like when he comes and raptures his bride and the glorious event that takes place? The wedding, the marriage supper of the Lamb. See, right now, all you are and all I am is promised to him. We're engaged to him. The marriage hasn't happened yet. And he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. He's looking for that, forward to that day when he comes and marries the bride. But you have to know that while that process is going on, you're still on the earth. And so am I. And here comes this suitor. And here comes this suitor. And here comes this rival. And here comes this rival. And every time they do, he gets impassioned. Jealous. Woo, say praise the Lord. So he moves from that first image of jealousy. It provokes him to jealousy. Amen. And again, see, they thought they were all right. He moves to the second scene. He brought me to the door of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall... Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I digged in the wall, behold, a door. He said, Ezekiel started. Now listen, I love this prophet. I told you you weren't going to be bored. Amen. He go over there. He's in Jerusalem now. He sees the image of jealousy there in the entryway of the temple. Okay, imagery. Now, God says, okay, go over here. I want you to dig through the wall. Can you see that prophet? He dig. What are you doing, Ezekiel? Well, God told me to dig through this. You know, think about it. If, if somebody started knocking a hole in the, in the wall from the outside in, you know. We're in here in church, and all of a sudden, boom! You know. <laughs> right? Everybody going, what's going on? And this weird dude digs a hole through the wall, sticks his head through the, through the hole. <laughs> you know what I mean? I told you he's weird, but he's weird in a good way. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise I guarantee you his wife couldn't figure him out. She died. She died early. What are you doing, hon? Oh, God told me to dig a hole in the side of the church. Really? Yeah, that's what he told me. And I'm digging this hole through the side of the church. And guess what? I came across a secret chamber. <laughs> a secret chamber in there. And I walked through that secret chamber. But what I got, when I got in there, he said, I didn't like what I saw. He said unto me, go in and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. And so I went in and saw and behold every form of creeping things. So now we move from the image of jealousy, the imagery in your mind, your soul, your spirit. Now you're starting to see on the walls of the temple. And what, are, what is there? The abominations, wicked abominations. Thank God for the blood. I said, thank God for the blood. That comes and cleanses my soul, my spirit, my mind, my body. He drank these abominations in his cup before he went to Calvary when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, not my will, but thy will be done. And then he went to that cross and he died for the cup that he drank. He died to remove all of this out of our lives. Say praise God to give you a brand new mind. Give you a new spirit. Remove all of the craziness out of the walls of your soul. The terror, the torment, the demonic spirits, the hallucinations. He took care of all of that on Calvary. Hallelujah. 
Why? Because he loved you. He had a passion for you. So I went and I saw and behold every form of creeping things, abominable beasts and idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan. So you've got 70 elders. Now why are they in sacred space? Why are they in the temple of God? That's the place for priests to operate. But you've got men out of place. Elders out of place. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. They are not in their place. This is the place. Sacred space is the place for the priest to minister. For the priest to operate. But you've got elders, the board there if you will. The board of elders. Standing out of their place. And Jezaniah is the board president. He's the one leading all of them. These 70 elders. He leading the eldership. Right there in sacred space. Amen. Now, I thank God. I thank God for the leadership I have in this church. You ought to. But we have the board president. His name is Jazaniah, which means Lord Ears. The Lord Ears. The Lord Ears. And he's the son of Shaphan. Whoa. If you study Shaphan, you find in 2 Kings chapter 22 that Shaphan was an awesome scribe. He took he, the, the are y'all, am I boring y'all? Well, praise the Lord. God bless your heart. But he was an awesome scribe. They found the word of God and they took it to Shaphan, you know, the scribe. And the scribe, Shaphan, read it to the king. He took it to hold of the priest, uh, the, the prophetess of God and read the word of God to the prophetess of God. He was an awesome man, an awesome scribe who had a zeal for reform and revival. His name was Shaphan. And he had a son named Gedaliah. And he had a son, the other son was Ahiakim. And those two sons, those two sons were powerful sons, faithful sons in the church. But then he's got this other boy, Jazaniah, who's an idol worshiper. It's a mystery to me how a godly man like Shaphan can raise up two faithful sons and have a devil in his house. This man was a devil. The point is, brothers and sisters, is that this man is a noble man. This man in Israel is a man of nobility. And he's the one leading the idolatry. With every man, his censer in his hand. You know, they're standing in front of those 70 idols. and Right? right? Amen. Thick cloud of incense went up. And right there in sacred space. And the board leaders, right there, the one leading the whole thing. Then said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Say, in the dark. In the dark, secret, secret. Say, praise the Lord. Every man in his, in the, listen, in the chambers of his imagery. Here we go again. We got the image of jealousy 
as the Bible calls it. Now we have the chambers of his imagery. They sent you back to the soul. This is going on in the soul. The worship of false gods going on in the soul. It's going on in the mind. High, the mind is high. The mind is illusional. The mind is delusional. The mind is full of all sorts of hallucinations and all kinds of thoughts. For they say, here it is, here it is. They're in their own imagery. For they say, the Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. Now I'm going to repeat myself and I'm coming to a close. But whatever we do, brothers and sisters, don't let it ever get that attitude or that spirit get in your heart. Okay? When you start, or I start thinking, God doesn't see me, God doesn't care, God's not going to help me, and you get in bitterness and anger, right? The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Dangerous. Because what we're doing is we're letting that idol come up in us that is keeping us from seeing how much he really loves us. How many believe God, lo- God loves you today? Love you. Amen. Then why do we give our minds to the high? Why do we give our minds to the idols? Why do we give our minds to hallucinations and, and thoughts and things that say God doesn't see us anymore? God doesn't care about me, you know? <laughs> 